Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Vanessa and you are watching the Exploring Oracle or the Exploracle for short. Today we have the Tarot of the Abyss by Anna Turian. This is published by US Games. And this is what the box looks like. Okay. So it's a standard two-piece box. Um, we have this guidebook inside. Tarot of the Abyss. And we'll just quickly go through um, what's inside here. So you have an introduction and then the court cards. It tells you about the deck. Uh, it does tell you about the deck because she does rename some of the suits. Uh, here, what's different? So she explains here that she renamed some of the suits like um, the Hierophant is now called the Wise One. And then Judgment has been renamed to awakening and the hanged man has become the hanged one okay and then she actually also added two additional cards for the three of swords and the ten of swords which we will be taking a look at later so then you go to the meanings of the major and the minor arcana uh, i really like how this is written it's it's very informative and it, it kind of Let's you, uh, how should I say this? Go into the artwork and then also know a little bit more about the meaning of the card. So it's definitely not just a little white book. And to be honest, it's one of the best written guidebooks that I've read. I, I like how this is set up. And you also have some spreads at the back and uh, some note about Anaturian. Okay, so first let's take a look at the backs of the cards. They are uh, fully reversible. And the cardstock is a matte, um, matte cardstock, really nice. Well, matte with, you know, there's some reflection of the light, but it's, I would still consider it matte. And the cardstock is really good. It's, uh, for me, it's not too thick. It's definitely not thin, and I think that it would shuffle really well. So I will just set up for the flip through and show you all of the cards. All right. Now, you'll notice that the art style, it's like it's drawn in pencil, but it's so very detailed. I mean, look at this High Priestess card. Uh, I honestly know nothing about art, but I can definitely appreciate the effort and the talent that goes into creating decks like this. Um, I think that's really why I love collecting decks or I like looking at the art in decks because it's just amazing. It's just like another way of appreciating art. So as always, please feel free to slow down, speed up, or pause if you want to take a closer look at the cards. It's not completely RWS. Uh, there's, a, you know, Anna has made her own style or made this deck her own, definitely. And it's really just amazing to look at. Uh, I was doing my exercises for the Tarot for Yourself workbook by Mary Kay Greer and this is one of the decks that I was using and it's quite an experience that workbook actually encourages you to uh, you know, to go into the cards and I use this deck and it's it's really interesting okay so we're going into the suits into our one suit how can you not appreciate this? <laughs> Honestly, like it's it's art. I mean, really, really beautiful art, and it's also a tarot. But I think so far out of all of the decks that I have, this is the one that I was. Uh, most amazed by or most impressed by and 
it's just really amazing to me like the the darks i mean you know the details on how these cards have a darkness and a shadow to it and it's like all drawn in pencil it i can't even fathom how that works and look at it now we're already in our cup suit And you can also feel the emotions in this deck because the faces are quite expressive. Page. Okay, so now we're moving on to the suit of swords and as mentioned she does have two extra cards in this suit two of swords and then here is the uh, for the three of swords you have the traditional rws uh, kind of interpretation for the three and then she also added this extra card which she goes into more of the meaning or the numerology numerology <laughs> numerological meaning of the three then you have the four of swords, the five, six. Mm, look at that. The sword suit is also my favorite suit. And I really appreciate the extra cards here as well. And the ten of swords. And you have the next extra card. She's the Ten of Swords. Again, she's going by the numeral numerology. Numerology. I can't say the word. Um, it's like ten is a completion of a cycle, and um, you know, it's more of you've gained all of this knowledge, something like that. That uh, that is how you can choose to interpret the Ten of Swords, and uh, you can choose which one would you would prefer to keep in your deck. The knight, queen, and the king. And on to our last suit, the pentacles. Queen and the king and I will zoom out a bit and show you how it shuffles and we'll just pick a card to read all right so I zoomed out and let's shuffle the cards because always I love to riffle shuffle and I can riffle shuffle this deck It's a new deck, so it's still a bit stiff, but the cardstock, I like the cardstock, and I think that, you know, by working with it more, it'll loosen up. Over oh. Let's put that back into the deck. It's not the cardstock, it's just me. It's not too slippery at all. It feels good. And shuffle. Okay, and then maybe we'll wait for that one. 
which is the Ten of Wands. Okay, so I'll zoom in again and we'll see what the guidebook has to say for this particular card. All right, so this is the Ten of Wands and I'll read the entire entry for the Ten of Wands. It's a bit long, uh, longer than what I usually do, but I wanted you to get a sense of how she writes this guidebook, which is why I feel like this is one of my favorites and I really like how this is written. So for the Ten of Wands, the Ten of Wands depicts a young boy carrying a large, heavy basket of wood on his back. His journey is not an easy one. The terrain is rocky and the steep stairs make his task all the more toilsome. Still, he makes progress step by step at a slow, steady pace. While most tarot decks show this card from the back or in profile, I decided to draw the boy ascending towards the viewer to highlight even more his sheer exhaustion and so that we might identify more personally with him. The Ten of Wands hold challenges in store for those who receive it in their spread. It speaks of burdens and feeling the weight of heavy responsibilities. It may be that you have taken on too many commitments and overextended yourself. While each independent activity might be enjoyable, it is hard to enjoy any of them when you are exhausted from carrying too onerous a load. In other cases, we may not have a choice as to the load we bear. Perhaps a job feels too demanding or overly taxing. Regardless of the specific source of your stress, the Ten of Wands warns you to be careful, as such burdensome responsibilities can have real impacts on your health. If at all possible, try to cut back on your activities. This is a card that reminds you to shift your focus and think more about yourself for a change. Isn't that lovely? I mean, the way she wrote that, the way she was able to explain why she drew it with the boy facing or going up the stairs and explaining the meaning of the card, it, it I don't know, I, I don't usually gush so much when I do this flip throughs, but really this deck, the guidebook, the cards, the art, it's beautifully produced. It is also a mass market deck. I got this from a local shop here in the Philippines. I will link it down below. But you can also readily purchase this or get it from Amazon or other bookstores or wherever you buy your tarot decks. So this has been the Tarot of the Abyss by Anna Turian. Uh, if you like this content, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks and bye!